Now, in this tutorial series, what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to assume that you guys have never created an Android app before, but you guys do have some programming experience. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to develop Android apps for both the phone and the tablet from the ground up. So that's what we're going to be doing, creating some awesome apps, someone that is totally new to Android app development. However, before I begin, I want to mention this. For those of you who have been following my YouTube channel for a long time, you probably already noticed that I have another um, Android app development tutorial series. And the reason that I decided to make a brand new one is because that tutorial series, we actually made it a couple years ago. And since then, a lot of the software and tools that you use to develop these apps have been updated. Actually, we have a brand new piece of software called Android Studio. And I'll show you guys how to install that and use it and everything but the software itself is a lot different than what we use to teach um, Android development in the past so again this tutorial series is pretty much just going to be updated new kind of more relevant so that's why I decided to do that so anyways I'm gonna be quiet now and let's go ahead and get started so the very first thing we need is of course the Java JDK now I'm guessing that if you guys are watching this then you already are familiar with Java at least a little bit and you probably already have the Java JDK installed on your computer. However, just to make sure that I cover everything 100%, if you don't have the Java JDK already installed on your computer, this is how you get it. And of course, I probably should mention this. Why do we need a Java JDK if we're making Android apps? Well, all Android apps, as well as a lot of the software itself, is made using Java. That's what language we're going to write in primarily to make these Android apps. So, of course, the Java JDK, which stands for the um, Java Development Kit, is the core foundation that we need before we can even think about making any Android apps. So, the website always changes, but if you go to Google and type in download Java JDK, then the first thing that's always going to pop up is the link to download this Java Development Kit. Now, if you click right here, what we want is this Java Platform JDK right there. However, whenever we click here, we see that we have a lot of Java development kits that are avail available for download. All right, so we know that we don't want Linux because I'm not on Linux. Um, we know that we don't want Mac, so we have a couple options here, Windows x86 and Windows 64. Now, the difference between these two is 64 is for the Windows 64 bit version and the 86 is for the 32 bit version of Windows. So if you don't know what version of Windows you have, go to the start menu and where you see computer right here, right click it and then you're going to see a thing called properties. Whenever you select that, if you look at your system type, it says, okay, 64 bit operating system. So that means I have Windows 64 bit. So whenever I download this, I'm going to choose 64. If yours says 32, then click this one right here. But of course, you need to accept the agreement first and then download it. And what it's going to do is it's going to download an executable file and it's going to take a while. So I'll pause my video. You know, I won't make you watch the whole thing. And we are back. It took about a minute, but now I just download the entire executable. And of course, if you're on Chrome, which you probably should be, highly recommend it, then go to your downloads and you can just click that. However, if you accidentally close out of that, then of course your downloaded files, if you go to your, well, I'll just show you guys. All right, you can either go to your computer from Windows Explorer and click downloads. That's probably the easiest way, so just do that. So anyways, whatever file you just downloaded, double click it, and then of course, I actually don't know if you could see that. I don't know if my screen recorder um, showed my system little pop-ups there. But it says, do you want to allow this to you know, um, access your computer? Yes. Let me close out all this. All right, so this is really self-explanatory. If you ever downloaded anything before, then it's going to be simple. Just click Next, Next, and it's going to do all the hard work for you. However, there's, there's one thing, once this is completely done, that... Um, you guys need to follow along with so um, again if you think about skipping this entire tutorial 
don't do that because you're going to miss an important step at the end. So wait for this entire thing to la 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 whatever. All right, and what you want to do is you want to make sure to leave everything in its default location because as long as you do that and as long as you follow along then whenever you um install download and install Android Studio it's not gonna be confused looking at some weird location for anything so make sure that you keep all the default settings whenever you're running this installer alright so now we have the JDK installed on our computer however before we download Android Studio what we need to do is we need to tell our computer exactly where it is and that's because later on when we develop or excuse me when we download Android Studio it's gonna look for that JDK so what we need to do is we need to explicitly say hey computer this is where the JDK is so go to your start menu and then click on computer and then make sure you're starting at your hard drive so in order to get the path to this as long as you kept everything at default during installation it's gonna be in your program files and then if you go down to Java double click that and what folder you want to click on is actually the JDK. This is um, the Java runtime environment, the JRE. Don't worry about that. Double click the JDK, ugh, JDK. And this is actually the path you want. So what you can do now is you can actually right click any of these files. But um, because it's going to give you the same path, what I'm about to show you guys. But just for consistency, right click this bin and click properties. So again, this is the location that you're looking for right here. The location that your Java development kit is at. So copy that, right click and copy. And now once you have that location, close out of everything because we have to tell our computer, all right, this is where our JDK is. So how do we do that? It's actually pretty simple. If you open your start menu again and right click computer, and go to properties you're gonna see a link on the left hand side that says advanced system settings if you click that you're gonna see this little pop-up right here click on the button that says environment variables so I already have this set up because actually for this tutorial I uninstalled my Java JDK and then I reinstalled it so you know just to show you guys how to do it but you're probably aren't gonna have a variable set up right here so in order to get that click new under user variables and you need to name the variable Java underscore home make sure that everything is in capital letters and then for the variable value paste in that location of your JDK and hit OK so what we're essentially doing is we're telling our computer alright whenever you need to work with the Java JDK or the JDK is kinda of redundant what I'm saying but whenever Android Studio is looking for it then it's gonna look in your environment variables and it's gonna say okay that's where all the crap I need is so you know it's not literally gonna say crap but you know now that we have everything con compatible and our computer is able to find and work with the Java JDK JDK it's probably getting annoying that I keep saying that but whatever we are now set up and ready to move on to the next step so thank you guys for watching and I also want to mention this before I let you guys go if you guys have any questions during this entire tutorial series about anything small including you know a little bit of code or anything big like um, maybe you have an error while you try to install something then go to my forum and under this section right here Java and Android development if you click that you can create a new post and then you can ask it right there and a lot of people are always here willing to help you can also browse some of the common topics and um, there's a lot of good information in here as well so chances are if you have a problem someone already asked it and they already figured it out but if you uh, can't find your answer then go ahead and create a new post again I am always on this website and a bunch of other people loving to help you out so for now um, thank you guys for watching in the next video we'll go ahead and download and install Android Studio alright guys so the next thing we have to do is download Android Studio now the website is most likely going to change because they always do however if you just type in download Android Studio it's always going to be the first thing that pops up so click this 
and of course this is the program that allows you to write Android applications now the cool thing about this is that unlike the old program that you used to use this was made just for writing Android apps and it has everything you need built in so this is the program where we actually write the code and this is the program where all these little emulators which are pretty much like virtual phones that you can test on those are built into the entire um, like layout designer and I'll teach you guys how to use that later on but it's basically um, a graphical um, way to lay out your Android apps that's built in as well it's incredibly awesome incredibly cool so let's go ahead and get started so of course click that agree to whatever let me read this real quick oh pretty cool alright download this and it's actually probably gonna take a little bit to download because it's almost a gigabyte it might be a gigabyte by the time you download it but anyways um I'll come back to you guys when this is done alright so it took a while but I finally have it download this executable file right here and I wanna mention this real quick before I move on if anyone was lazy and decided to skip my last tutorial what we did is we set up the JDK to be compatible with Android Studio so if you did do that and skip everything then follow this direction right here but for those of you guys who stuck with me then you guys are good to go because we already did that step so anyways actually I'm gonna close out of that we don't need this browser anymore however if we go to our downloaded files then we see that we now have this Android Studio bundle so this of course is the installer so double click that alright so anything that pops up just say yes we trust them we trust Google next and leave pretty much you're gonna leave all of these as uh, the default agree agree um, do I want to install in the default location yes recommended looks good that looks good as well alright so it says it is complete installation believe setup was completed successfully sweet go ahead and click next and I actually don't want to start this up right yet because what I want to do is I'm gonna to go to my start menu right here and I'm gonna to go to all programs and now we can see after we have everything downloaded and installed we're gonna have a folder called Android Studio so if I click that I'm gonna see this Android Studio program I'm gonna right click it and send it to desktop so that way I have a um, Android Studio icon on my desktop because we're gonna be using it a lot now so the first time I open this I'm gonna right click and we're gonna choose run as administrator now the very first time you open it this thing is gonna pop up right here and it's gonna download all the extra components that it needs but don't worry this is only a one-time thing the very first time to set everything up alright so all those additional components look like everything is good to go so click finish alright so this is the welcome screen to Android Studio from here what we can do is we can actually start a brand new project however before we get started there is one last thing that we need to do and this isn't absolutely necessary but it's gonna save you guys a ton of headaches in the future if you go down to configure right here you're gonna see something called SDK manager and if this is grayed out or you can't select it for some reason make sure that you close out of this and right click and run as administrator and then it's gonna be be available so anyways click this right here and what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a new pop-up window that appears now this basically allows you to download additional packages or additional code that you're gonna use whenever you're developing apps as you can see it says install nine packages and the ones that are checked are actually the ones that we're gonna to want to install so if you click this button right here and of course we need to accept the license and install then what it's gonna do is it's gonna install these additional packages alright guys so once you have all the optional packages installed what you can do is just close out of Android SDK manager and it's also a better idea to close the Android studio altogether and now right click it and run it as an administrator to open it again and the reason that you want to do this is because whenever you open it this time 
you want to make sure that Android Studio is aware of all the updated packages. So that's why we closed out and opened it again so it doesn't have anything weird stored in its cache or memory or anything. So now we are finally done installing everything and setting everything up. We are ready to start making our first Android project. Alright guys, welcome back to another video and in this tutorial what I want to do is I just want to make sure that everyone's Android Studio is set up and working correctly and the best way to do this is actually build a really simple basic Android Studio project and run it and if we get um, any errors or if we come across any issues I'll show you guys how to fix them as well so the first thing that you always do whenever you create a new project is just click start a new Android Studio project you guys probably could figure that out now I'll talk you guys through this um, real quick but again this is just an example to make sure that everything is working correctly so if I am kinda of running over everything kinda of quick or if you don't fully understand everything that I'm doing don't worry we're gonna be coming back to everything cover it in detail later on but again let me explain just real quick what's going on now this of course the application name is not only the project name so it's not only you know whenever you're browsing your computer you can identify which project you're working on but this application name is actually the name of the app whenever you put it in the Google Play Store so again for this one we can just keep the default name because this is like I said a really stupid example just to make sure everything's working we're not actually going to be selling this however when you do develop an app that you are eventually going to sell take some time and um, think of a good application name because it does matter now the company domain again yours is probably going to be like I don't know what it was to start with probably like example.org or example.com or something but the company domain is how you identify each application now as you can see whenever you type in a domain name okay come on cursor the new boston.com dot cinnamon all right, dot com. you see that the package name fills in automatically and this is called a reverse domain notation so whenever you're going to a website you would type the name followed by dot com the package name is com dot the new boston dot the application name so again this is just an identifier to say okay there's a lot of apps named my application on the Google Play Store how do we know which one is Bucky's well that's the one with the com the new Boston so again this is just the name of your app your website and then once you fill in both those things it fills in the rest of the crap for you so ugh, got like phlegm in my throat so click next and this is actually an easy screen to understand it says okay you're developing an app for the phone and tablet this is all we're going to be doing for this tutorial series I'm not going to show you guys how to develop anything for the TV or where now where is pretty much anything that you can wear on your body like um I don't know if they have uh, uh, like glasses yet but this is like smart watches and stuff like that so again this tutorial series is just going to cover how to make apps for the phone and tablet so select that and also I probably should mention this the minimum SDK you probably either want to put 8 or whatever the default is now this is um well you guys um, know like the different versions of Android that came out of course the later ones are the newest ones but the reason that you just don't want to go ahead and develop for the latest one is because a bunch of people still have these older versions so if you say okay well I got you know I don't know maybe you got KitKat so that's great but whenever you put your app on the Google Play Store check this out it's only gonna run on 25% of the devices so if you go all the way back to Froyo this was a really popular SDK whenever you develop apps for this then it's gonna run on pretty much all devices unless someone has like an old ancient phone now if you're like okay well with that logic and understanding let me just go ahead back to the original API right there and uh, I should be good to go well you don't want to do that either because whenever you make an app that's compatible with all these ancient operating systems is going to involve a lot more code and a lot more testing and it's going to be pretty much pointless because no one even has these anyways so again a good um, median for this is to go to API 8 at the time of this recording again this is probably gonna 
change as time goes on. But right now, I'll stick with API 8. And this makes sure that you cover pretty much every device that anyone would have. And you don't have to write any useless code. So let me adjust in my seat a little bit here. So now our next choice is, OK, add an activity to mobile. So we probably should understand what the heck is an activity. Of course, this is like the two second tutorial, so I'm just going to explain it really simple. Ugh. OK, probably should edit that out. You know, I'll probably just leave it in. Too lazy. <laughs> All right. So right now, just think of an activity as a screen. So if you're making an app for, I don't know, a website, the home screen would be its own activity. The about section would be another activity. So again, it's a little more complex than that. But for now, just think of an activity as a screen on your app or a view. So for this demonstration, we're just going to have blank activity. So what this is going to do is it's going to set up a template app with one screen on it. Perfect for testing. So now, of course, we need to give our activity a name. Why do we need to give our activity a name? Well, that's just because whenever you're making an app with a bunch of different screens, you obviously need a way to identify all of them because if you want to say, okay, switch to the home screen, switch to the, I don't know, my profile screen. Well, this is just how your app is going to identify each one and know what's going on. And we'll talk about the layout um, and all these different things later on. The layout is pretty much how things are positioned on the screen. And all this other stuff is kind of, um, you know, that's not the point of this tutorial. We'll cover that later on. But for now, just remember that this main screen is called main activity. Simple enough and finish. All right, guys. So after Android Studio is finished setting up and preparing your project, you're going to have something that looks like this. And if you have an error right now, then I know what error that you're getting. So I'm going to show you guys how to fix that in just a second. But for now, I just want to warn you guys, even though it looks kind of overwhelming, trust me, this is set up perfectly for making apps in, in about seven tutorials or something. Once we cover the entire interface, this is going to feel just like home and all the stuff that feels overwhelming right now is uh, actually going to, you're probably going to find it very useful. But for now, I'm going to mention a couple of things that are going to make your life a whole lot easier. The first thing is, if you ever want to access that SDK manager from here, then what you do is you go up to this little thing. It kind of looks like the little, I think his name's Andy the Android. It looks like he's sitting in this bucket with a down arrow. But this is the Android SDK manager. So click that. And again, you don't have to close out of your entire project to open up the SDK manager anymore. And I actually want to show you guys one more package that um I forgot to tell you guys to install later on. I mean earlier. So if you open up the SDK manager and you scroll all the way down, then make sure that you have this package installed right here. It's the Intel x86 emulator accelerator. And again, I installed it already, but it takes like two seconds to install. But what this is, is basically whenever we develop these sample apps, what we're going to do is we're going to run those on pretty much emulators or they're pretty much like little virtual phones that we can use for testing. And those are kind of slow. So that package just helps speed up the entire process and um, makes it run a little bit smoother and faster. So if you guys wanted to know what that was, there you go. If you didn't, well, uh, you know, sorry for wasting your time. But that's how you get to the Android SDK Manager from here. Now, another thing that I want to do is mention this. A lot of you guys probably have an error that popped up that says, OK, I can't find the Android SDK or I don't know where the Java JDK is. You got to help me out because Android Studio won't run um, how it's configured right now. So if Android Studio has a problem finding either of those things, then go to File and go to Project Structure. And then from here, it says, OK, the Android SDK location is where and actually if this if you see like I think if you get an error it shows like some red text or something but in order to navigate to it if it's not set up correctly just click these little three little dots on the right hand side and then you can say okay you obviously aren't looking in the right place this is where I downloaded my Android SDK and the same thing with a Java development kit or the JDK 
make sure that the directory ends with the JDK in your version number and make sure that the Android SDK ends with SDK. So again, if you um, downloaded it to a different um, directory than I did in the example, then you're going to have these errors. So that is where you fix them, depending on wherever you downloaded it. So mine is correct, so I'm just going to close out of that. And I probably should mention this as well. All right. So just so every um, user is looking at the same thing, I'm going to change the app theme right here because this typically changes from user to user. So make sure, I'll show you guys. If you click on app theme right here, then the theme is pretty much the overall look and feel of your app. So switch yours to material light and click OK. And as you can see, your interface changes a little bit. Again, this is just so everyone um, is looking at the same thing and you're not watching this tutorial and are like, okay, mine looks different than yours and that's weird. Now, the last thing I want to mention before we actually run this is this. Right now, whenever I'm teaching these tutorials, you see that we have minimal screen size and that's just because I wanted to make the window small enough where um, people with smaller monitors can see the videos clearly. Well, the problem with this is the screen whenever we're developing this app it looks kinda small so in order to get rid of this phone body then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the settings and you see it says include device frame I'm gonna uncheck that so again if you ever like developing and looking at the phone itself maybe it gives you a better idea of what the application is gonna look like then do that however just to make sure that these tutorials are a little bit more clear I'm gonna get rid of that and then we're gonna see the interface a little more clearly so once we're ready to run our app and test everything out this is what I want you to do go up to tools and select Android AVD manager now if you don't wanna go through all those steps you can also click this little button right here this is just a shortcut to the AVD manager and the AVD manager stands for Android virtual device manager so this, let me make this a little bit more clear. All right, so this is where you manage all of your virtual devices. And again, a virtual device is just a little simulator, a little testing phone that you can make so you don't have to take an actual Android phone and plug it in your computer whenever you're developing apps and you wanna test them out. So by default, whenever you download and install Android Studio, it comes with one virtual device. This is the Nexus 5. So that's what simulator phone comes built with it. But of course, if you ever want to make a new one, you just create virtual device by clicking that button down there. And you can actually create, um, you know, little simulator TVs and whatnot. But I'll talk you guys through how to create a virtual device. I don't know. Maybe you want to create a same virtual device um, as the phone that you actually own. But for now, you can just use this one right here. Now the reason that I'm not going to use this one and the reason that I built another one called Bucky's phone is something that you don't have to worry about. It's actually because whenever I'm recording these tutorials and I'm running this little simulator, it takes up a lot of space and it doesn't really show that great on my, uh, like whenever I'm making tutorials. So that's why I made Bucky's phone. It's pretty much the same thing except um, I made it a lot smaller so it shows up better in my tutorials. But anyways what you want to do is you want to click this little green button right by Nexus 5 I'm gonna click mine called Bucky's phone and this is gonna launch as you can see right here the virtual device which is pretty much just a simulator of a phone now the first time you run this it's gonna take a long time to boot up because what it pretty much represents is you you're buying a brand new phone so it has to start it up for the very first time and the reason that this takes so long is if you think about it what it's actually doing is it's building an entirely new operating system or an entirely new device within your computer so it has to build a new phone with a new operating system that can run new apps so that's why the entire build process in you know to get it up and running takes a little bit longer than you may like so once your virtual device is up and running and yours may look a little different than mine because I did run mine before 
but to you it may simulate opening a brand new phone so it's gonna be like welcome to Android you're gonna to have to press OK whatever but anyways you just click OK a bunch of times and then you're gonna to get to this screen right here so this is the unlock screen and of course if you are used to an iPhone or something the unlocking process is a little bit different than it is on Android so just click and drag up and that's gonna unlock your phone and as you can see it's just like a normal phone you can even browse the internet from here but what we are worried about is running our application so let's hop over back to Android Studio and I'm just gonna close out of this but what you want to do is you want to go up to this little button right here and whenever you hover over it it says run app so click that little green triangle and what this is going to do is it's going to build your app for you and it's actually going to give us one more option I believe yep right here so it says okay we're building your app where do you want to test it out so since we already have this emulator running right there make sure that your radio button is checked choose the running device and of course you're probably only going to have one running so you can just click OK so what this is going to do is it's going to build it and it's going to launch it in our little simulator phone so it takes a little bit of time but don't worry um, that's normal but eventually as you can see what happens is it finally launches and that's actually pretty cool that you don't have to actually go click on app and open it or anything it just launches right for you pretty sweet so we see that our application says my application hello world probably the coolest app ever invented we could probably put this on Google Play right now and make at least like 10 million dollars but of course what we want to do is actually jazz this up a little bit more before we put this bad boy for sale so that is the process of how to build a very simple app and test everything out again my guess is that since everyone's system is set up a little bit differently if things don't run completely smoothly for you or if you get any bugs or errors please go to my forum post your questions and there are a lot of people willing and actually wanting to answer your questions for you because whenever they answer someone's questions on the forum they actually get these things called points so um, you are encouraged to ask questions because they probably want questions to help you out with but anyways if you have any problems that's what you do thank you guys for watching in the next tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys something else that is definitely awesome. So I'll see you then. Alright guys, welcome back to another tutorial. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a real quick overview of the interface. Because whenever I first started out with Android Studio, it was all kind of overwhelming and kind of confusing. It just made me feel uncomfortable not really knowing what any of this stuff was. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go through piece by piece and talk to you guys in detail what everything means instead as we need the tools that's what I'm going to be talking to you guys about okay so this is you know the AVD manager and this is how you use it so instead of overwhelming you guys giving you you know the intricate details of what everything is I just want to give you guys a real general overview to make you guys a little bit more comfortable with the inter interface Blah, can't talk alright so of course at the very top this is simple up here we have the menu bar pretty much all of our additional tools and settings is well as some you know very common stuff we can find in the menu bar nothing new there now under it we have a toolbar so all of these little icons this is actually called the toolbar right here now as we saw in the last tutorial what the toolbar is is basically shortcuts to more commonly used aspects of the program for example um, maybe this SDK manager well we can also get there with tools Android SDK manager but since we use that quite a bit that's why they put that in the toolbar now if you ever want to customize your toolbar I recommend just keeping it the same but if you ever have a tool that you find yourself using a lot you can actually right click in this empty area and click customize menus and toolbars and then you can click the little programs that you either want to you know remove or add again you click on them and all of your settings are right here to either add them or remove them from your toolbar pretty intuitive so that's what that little chunk of this uh, Android Studio is now underneath this 
this little thing right here that looks like a, I don't know kind of a file directory explanation on um, like steroids or something this is actually called the navigation bar and basically what it is is it shows the path to whatever current file you're working on so this right here the navigation bar is pretty much the same of, as this thing up here so it's pretty much a long file path now the cool thing about this is that like I said it is pretty much a file path on steroids because if you ever go to a directory you can actually click on it and it's going to show you all the contents of that directory so pretty sweet and again it's a file path to whatever current file you're working on so if you change your file this is going to change as well now this main area that I cannot ignore is the editor window so the editor window is where we're going to be spending most of our time and it's pretty much the main area to show whatever file you are currently working on so right now um, we'll talk about this designer later on it's pretty much as you probably could have guessed how you lay out all the widgets and stuff for your interface now we're also going to be looking at this a lot which is pretty much the text view of the file pretty much where we're going to be editing the source code and doing a bunch of cool stuff but anyways this main area shows whatever current file you're working on you probably could have guessed that now over here on the left hand side this is called the project window now whenever I am developing an app what I like to do is I like to change this drop down from Android to project so as you can see whenever you change it to project it's gonna list every directory in your entire project now one of the most important directories is called app now this is where all your source core source code and all your uh, like main layout files are so if you just want a real condensed view of all the important files then you can just hover down to Android and I actually keep that on Android for this tutorial but if you ever want an overview of your entire project again you can change that to project but just for these tutorials um, all the source code and stuff is in this Android drop down so I'll stick with that I, uh, I don't know I think it'll be a little bit easier I guess alright so we pretty much cover this whole interface except for these things on the side these little bars that say like project structure all of that crap so first of all as you can see whenever I click it it toggles whatever window is on and off so this is the project window and I'm gonna click that it's gonna to toggle that visible or I don't want to say it, it's invisible but you know visible invisible I'll say that whatever so if you ever feel that your entire interface it just looks kind of cluttered and you decide that you want to hide all of these quick window bars then go down in the very bottom left corner and you're gonna see this little square gray icon this is the toggle either to show or hide all of these quick window bars so click that and they're all gonna be hidden click it again show them all hide show hide show can do it all day if you want so I'm gonna go ahead and click that again so it shows them all because that's the default now another thing I want to point out is if you hover over it it's gonna give you all of those quick windows so I don't know maybe you're on uh, I don't know maybe you're on the structure and you want to get the project again but you're too lazy to bring your mouse all the way back up there so you can just go this click project and it's gonna pop up for you again um, just two different ways of doing the same thing if you go to help and by the way that was basically the quick two second overview of the interface of course there's a lot of other stuff but like I said I'm gonna be covering those as we need them as not to overwhelm you guys right now so what I'm gonna teach you guys right now are just little tips that I don't you you guys are probably gonna thank me for because they're just gonna make your experience developing apps a whole lot better first is if you go to help and you scroll down to default key map references let me actually minimize this although I don't think it'll matter what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a PDF of all of the keyboard shortcuts that you can use for the program so again of course I'm not gonna go over any of these right now because that would just be dumb and boring so instead what I recommend is actually printing this out laminating it and putting it on every single wall in your room because these are incredibly useful and you're gonna be using them a lot but actually for these tutorials 
I don't like to use keyboard shortcuts because if like a window pops up and then you guys just see my mouse in the same place, you're like, okay, how the heck did you do that? And I don't know, it just gets confusing whenever I'm teaching, but they will be useful to you. Now, another thing that I want to show you guys that probably a lot of you guys are uh, itching to do is change the theme of your entire Android Studio. I know a lot of you like a dark theme, so let me show you how to do that right now. If you go to File, Settings, and this was something else. All right, so File, Settings, and if you go to Appearance and then Theme, by default, this is IntelliJ or whatever it is. Windows one is pretty much um, a lighter theme, but the font's a little bit different. In Darkula, um, I don't want to change it because my screen recorder is probably gonna tweak out if I change the entire theme. But right now, I'm gonna keep this one because I love it. Darkula is the dark one that you guys might be looking for. Windows, if you like really ugly, stupid looking font, then you can choose that too. So of course, after this, you would just hit apply and then okay, but I like mine, so I'm just gonna can't, actually, while I'm in here, I'll talk to you guys about a few more things. All right, so first of all, actually, let me back out of here so you guys can see what I'm talking, what I'm about to teach you. All right, so first of all, whenever we're working with a text file, just go ahead and click any Java file to open up. We're not gonna be talking about the source code right now, but I'm gonna be showing you guys some useful things of how to actually work with it. As you can see, the gutter on the left-hand side, for some reason, and I'm not sure why, but every IDE and every text editor, um, pretty much that I ever downloaded, it doesn't show the line numbers by default. And I have no idea why they do that because I always love looking at the line numbers. So to display the line numbers on this one, it's actually really easy. Just right-click anywhere in the gutter, that's the gray area, and click Show Line Numbers. Pretty sweet. Check that out. Now another thing that I absolutely hate is this co code folding. That's pretty much when you have a bunch of code, like an entire body of a function or this right here, and it bunches it up for you. Now the reason I hate this is because I love looking at all of the code and also for the tutorials if you guys are trying to copy the source code and you're like, okay, I need to know what he imported, but oh, that's great. It's all bunched up. It's really annoying even to me and I'm sure it's even more annoying to you. So if you want to get rid of all of the code folding as it's called, go to file and back in settings. Let me minimize this, make sure you guys see everything. And go to cold or excuse me, that's console folding. Go to editor under the IDE settings and code folding. And right here this first checkbox is just to show the code folding outline and that's that little arrow you can click to either bunch it up or expand it but I, what I want to do is I want to uncheck all of these so none of my code is going to be folded again once I apply this as you can see my actual area that might um, that you guys can see maybe a little bit bigger but whenever you guys are trying to read my source code in the tutorials then it's gonna make it a whole lot easier so again I highly recommend putting a line numbers on by right clicking showing line numbers and getting rid of code folding because I absolutely hate it personal preference but you know gotta encourage you guys to do the same so in the next couple tutorials now that we are kind of more familiar with the interface we can get into the good stuff actually creating an app the interface and um, well it's gonna be awesome so for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time alright guys welcome back to another video and in this tutorial what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to create your own custom AVDs of course your virtual devices I showed you guys how to use the default one earlier but if we want to become expert app developers from the ground up that's where we need to start we need to understand pretty much what goes on behind the scenes because after all all these apps that people develop they would be pretty worthless if we didn't have any phones or tablets to run them on so that's what I'm gonna be doing and in the next tutorial I think I said that last time but in the next tutorial I promise we're gonna be getting into the code the designer all that good stuff so for now hop up to this little thing remember this is the AVD manager and again 
I already told you guys that I created my own custom one right here and in the last example you guys may have ran ran this one and it may have taken up your whole screen probably pretty annoying so in this tutorial what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to create your own custom AVDs so first of all go down here to this little button and click create virtual device now of course the first thing we have to choose is what device do you want to create do you want to create a TV a phone a wearable like a watch or a tablet well, I'm just gonna to go to phone and then once I click that I get all of the definitions of phone now don't let the word definition fool you these are pretty much just different phones like if you went into I don't know like a Verizon store or like a Best Buy or something this is pretty much the equivalent of picking out which phone that you want so of course this edited one is one that I was working on earlier but let's just go ahead and pick out um, let's use the Galaxy Nexus that was actually a pretty popular one so this is the Galaxy Nexus phone now the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to clone this because if I start just editing this then it's gonna mess up the default settings so you always want to clone it and this is gonna allow you to use a copy that if you mess up with then you just messed up the copy no big deal so first of all since this is our own custom phone I'm gonna name this thing anything that I want so we'll say that um I don't know we'll say that we're making the slimmest phone in the world so I'm gonna call my phone slim shady the new phone that's gonna wipe out Samsung wipe out Motorola slim shady is the next big thing alright so anyways there's my little daydream another thing that I want to point out is all of this stuff again we're gonna be customizing a bunch of stuff on this phone later on but this is pretty much the hardware configuration now you don't really ever want to change the hardware configuration of your phone because it's not like um they ever release phones with like 720 by uh, 18 million pixels you know the hardware always stays the same for the most part it's the software that changes so again give your device or your phone a custom name and click finish and now if you go to phone you can see okay this is our custom phone same hardware we didn't do anything stupid to it so click on it and choose next so now that we have pretty much the phone itself and by that I mean just the hardware we can go ahead and start working on the system image so this is pretty much saying what version of Android do you want to use now I recommend um, putting the latest one on it just because I don't know you know that oops, knocked over my uh, mouse actually by the way I started this has nothing to do with app development or anything but um I started to get like carpal tunnel symptoms so whenever I would type like my entire arm there would be like a nerve that shot up and I'm like oh my god in the middle of my tutorial so I got this cool little glove that had like bean bags in it and I also got these things called vertical a vertical mouse so go to Google and type in vertical mouse that's what I'm using it's like this goofy looking mouse that um, I don't know it kinda looks dangerous to be honest but anyways got a little sidetrack there back to the video so what we want to choose is what version of Android do we want to put on that phone we just made well a system image is pretty much just a copy of all the system files and settings pretty much just think of it as like your main um, system your main computer so the one I like to use is just uh, x86 from Google these all are open source but I always just went with Google because I don't know they have like the best developers in the world and you always know that their system image is nice working correctly it never gave me any problems so I like to choose that one click next now here is where I like to do a couple of things to um, pretty much customize my virtual device so again this name looks pretty good alright that looks good that looks good one thing that I like to do is I like to go to scale and right now the one you just saw Bucky's phone that was 4 dp on device one pixel on screen now what this does is it just shrinks it to make it fit better on your screen because again this screen size of the phone it might be bigger than your desktop screen size so again whenever you're developing it's gonna give you some problems 
I usually choose 4DP on device. 10DP is like a really mini phone. It looks like, I don't know, like the size of your, it's just way too small. So again, I'm going to choose, <coughs> that was embarrassing. Anyways, moving on. So uh, yeah, that's what I like to do. Now, another thing I want to point out is this emulated performance, you can only choose one of these. And I'm going to recommend used host GPU. Now, what this does is it allows the emulator to use your computer's graphics card, the actual computer, your desktop or laptop or whatever, to make it run faster. Now, this snapshot, what this would do is it will pretty much um, keep the state of your emulator emulator so whenever you close out of it it starts up faster again so the reason I don't like this is because whenever you close your emulator it has to save everything and it takes a little bit of time to close out so I'm gonna recommend use host GPU which pretty much speeds up your emulator and during your development process you can just keep your phone running so um, you know as long as you keep it running you shouldn't have any issues at all so now that we have our virtual device set up, just click finish. And this takes a while to actually create it. But once we have it created, again, what we can do is we can actually edit it to go to this button. And of course, if you ever want to change any settings, maybe, okay, that was actually a little too small. So I'm going to boost that size up. You can do it right there. And of course, to test it out, you can just click this green button right here. Now while this is booting up, again, like I said, during your development process, you can actually just leave this entire emulator running. You don't need to close out of it, like, um, I don't know, maybe in some other uh, like program programming languages you're learning, you actually close out of a program whenever you're testing it and then rebuild it. Well, the cool thing is you can just keep this window open and then click this to rebuild your project and it's pretty much just going to restart the app right in your emulator so you don't have to wait for this to boot up every time so again there you go there's your emulator again this one was just a demonstration I'm gonna delete it because I already have that sweet one um, Bucky's phone that I'm gonna use for the tutorials but if you ever want to make your own custom emulators your AVDs or edit them delete them now you know how so now that we know how to make those we can finally move on to the good stuff it's gonna be awesome so I'll see you guys in the next tutorial alright guys welcome to another tutorial and in this video what I want to do is I want to explain pretty much the overall structure of a really basic simple app so make sure that you have in these files should already be open because they probably open by default whenever you created your project but if you accidentally close them make sure you have this activity main .xml open and that's of course an app res layout activity main and this one right here main activity .java. and that's of course an app java your com dot the new boston my app or whatever you named it package and this file right here so again these two files open and remember in the last couple tutorials i said every single app is made up of these things called activities now for now just think of an activity as a screen so if you're making an app for I don't know like uh, your website you might have an activity for your profile page you might have an activity for the home screen you might have an activity for like the about section for your company or something I don't know but each app like I said is made up of these screens and these screens the technical technical ugh, name for them is an activity so with that being said, we can now talk about this. Each activity within your app is made up of two parts. The first part is the part we see right here. Right here, It's the user interfaces where all your colors, your text, um, pretty much the design of your activity is going to be right here in this XML file. Now the brains of your activity is this Java file right here. For example, whenever you have a button on your activity and you click it, well you need to tell that button to do something so the smart intelligence of your activity is going to be all in this code the Java file so again your app is made up of activities different screens now each screen has a uh, pretty much a user interface the design 
and the smarts of it or the brains of it and that's a Java class so pretty much if we ever wanted to make another activity what we would do is we would create a new class with a new name and a new XML file simple enough so now that we understand pretty much the basic overview of what an activity is and what they're made up of we can start talking about the different um, components of it so hop over to this XML file which I said is pretty much the interface the layout of your entire app what it looks like now if you look at the bottom we have two different tabs right here the design view and the text view now I want to mention this because this might confuse some people this is actually just two different views of the same exact file what Android Studio did is they built this tool that is pretty much just a user-friendly tool of working with the interface but what it's actually doing whenever you I don't know like edit part of your interface is it's actually editing an underlying file for you and that's the XML file so you can either do that with the design tool by dragging and dropping stuff in editing some settings or just editing the source code directly so let's actually go ahead and look at an example of this The first thing I want to do is get rid of this so hop over to your XML file in design view click on this hello world and then just hit delete on your keyboard so we have a blank nothing here so the first thing I probably should mention is this what you can do to each of your activities is you can add widgets to them now widgets are just little thingies that you add to your interface and I say thingies because there's not really one word to describe all these things for example let's add one of these large text areas and this is pretty much to add any static not changing text so let's just go ahead and drag that in the middle and type anything you want so if you actually drag it in the middle you're gonna see these little green grid lines and that's just to align everything properly now if you double click this then you can edit the text of it and I'm just gonna type in like the new Boston hit enter and it changes so it's really intuitive like that not really hard to figure out so you can also add some more widgets if you want again like I said I'm just demonstrating um, how to use the basic tools so feel free to drag any of these widgets on if you just want to play around with it for example you have radio buttons and progress bars all that stuff so again widgets are just thingies that you can add to your interface now again you can either do that in design mode or text mode so whenever you click text mode it actually shows you a little preview right here which is actually nice so let's go ahead and just add one little property so in your XML file right here just so um, you don't you know I don't leave you guys hanging and I do explain everything if you guys never work with XML before it's pretty much like HTML but you can use cool names for your tags so if you don't know HTML or XML then I'll probably recommend going to watch those tutorials but as long as you know HTML then you guys will probably be able to follow along with these tutorials fine so again a real quick overview we're gonna be talking about this in detail later on this tutorial is just to give you guys a basic understanding so right now our main tag right here is a relative layout now a layout is just a general overview of it's saying how widgets should be positioned on the screen and there are different types of layouts that we can have but it's pretty much the overall rules of how things can be laid out um, now this text view right here is just this widget right here so each widget you add actually adds a new XML element to your file so say that we wanted to change the background color of this right here well what we would do is actually go up to relative layout and add a new attribute for right now I just want to show you guys if you type Android colon and type background then what you can do is you can actually type in a value here now this is actually one of my favorite colors 006699 um, it's a blue color that I use on my website a lot so again you can also um, pretty much edit the interface this way through the source code so again the XML is your interface we looked at how to change it with design this design tool and we're probably going to be using this one more often and also the source code directly is pretty much just like a website um, kind of like Dreamweaver if you ever use that so yeah and actually what I want to do is actually click this widget right here and you see that I just click that 
and it gave me some problems, what I'm going to do is hit Control Z, and I'm going to show you guys this little tip. Over here in their component tree is pretty much an overview of your entire activity. So this is your entire screen. This is the layout of how the widgets are supposed to be arranged. And right here, I'm going to click Text View. So if you ever have a bunch of widgets and they're kind of hard to select, maybe they're close together or whatever, you can actually just select it right in this component tree, and it's going to select it for you. So again, deselect it, select it again, makes selecting your widgets a little bit easier. And actually, what I want to do to this is change the color of the text to white. So I'm going to select that widget, and I know the property for this is text color. So if I find that, I'm just going to click in well I guess I just type it in I know the value the value of white is FFF FFF and hit enter and check it out your text is now white probably the coolest app ever again this tool right here it isn't really that hard to understand but we'll cover more about it later on got your widgets component tree properties drag and drop tomato tomato so now let's go ahead and hop over to this now there's actually one more file that I want to show you before I let you go. So each activity, like I said, is an XML and Java file. However, go up to your app and you're going to find a directory under it called manifest. Now expand this and you're going to find another XML file called Android manifest.xml. Now double click that to open it and let me drag this all the way to the left. All right. So to recap one more time. Your app is more likely than not going to have a bunch of different activities. Now, this Android manifest right here, think of this like is the main manager for your app, or it's where everything comes together. If you have a bunch of activities floating around, they can be kind of hard to keep track of. So what this does, again, it's the main file that pretty much manages your entire app. So each activity that you create, this is actually going to be a new element in the Android manifest file. So I'll actually talk to you guys about this right now. As soon as your application starts, of course, your phone doesn't know what to do. It says, OK, where do I go? You have a bunch of different activities. What am I supposed to be doing? The very first thing that your phone's going to do is it's going to look for a file called Android manifest.xml. So it says, OK, I'm always going to look for this file right here. And right after I open this file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all of your activities. Now, right now, we only have one activity, so it shouldn't take it too long to find. But it's going to look through all your activities right here, and it's going to look for a property called, actually, all these properties are kind of important, but it's going to look for a property called launcher. Now, this launcher is pretty much saying that this is the main activity that you want to launch first. This is where your app's starting point is. So it says, OK, I found it. Now let's check out this activity. All right, so it says the launcher is the main activity. So from here, you want me to go to the main activity. So it hops over here, and then it says, OK, well, what's the deal with this main activity? Well, all of this we'll talk about later. Essentially, all this activity does right now is it sets this as your layout activity underscore main right there so again three very important files but that's essentially all our app is doing right here again I'm gonna be covering the details of everything later on but your phone is gonna look at this first Android manifest at XML it's gonna look for the activity that it's supposed to launch now ours says go to main activity and all main activity do T does right now, well, oh, I can't talk, is it launches this layout. So what the user does is they click to open this app and they see this layout. But now we know what's going on behind the scenes so we can edit it and start making some really awesome stuff. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and, well, I'll see you guys later. All right, guys, welcome back to another tutorial. And in this video, actually, the first thing I want you guys to do in this tutorial is go to your kitchen and grab a huge bucket of popcorn and then after that go to your bedroom and grab the most comfortable blanket you can possibly find and then come back because once you have both those things you're ready to hear the story probably the greatest story I ever told this story is called the life of an activity 
So, you know, if you're an Android developer, this might be a pretty interesting story. Definitely pretty useful. It starts out like this. Every activity that you ever create is going to be a subclass of the special class that we didn't see yet called the activity class. So out there somewhere, there's this activity class and every activity that you create, we're going to inherit from. Now remember, whenever we inherit from something, we get all of the cool methods from that class. Now if you're looking at this and you're like, okay, I can clearly see that main activity extends action bar activity. And extends just means inherit, of course you guys know. So this is actually a subclass of action bar activity, but you said that every activity that I create is going to inherit from this activity class. Well, even though you can't see it directly right here, this action bar activity is inheriting from another class and that class is inheriting from activity. So this main activity that we just created is like fourth generation of the awesome activity class. But I just want to mention that because if you guys are looking at all these methods, you're not like, okay, where did all these methods come from that I'm overriding? Well, they came from that activity class and all this class is, is it's pretty much a basic template that gives us a bunch of cool functions that we could use on whatever activities we create. So that's the purpose of that. So since we have all these cool functions, let's talk about what they are and why we need them. Well, every activity that you create, it goes through a certain life cycle. Now, the first thing that happens is it calls this method called onCreate. So whenever the user first starts your app for the very first time and your activity is born, it gets created. Now, in this activity, what you typically do is you set the layout. Of course, that makes sense. The very first thing you want to do is give the user a nice interface set up to look at. Now, just a real quick overview, and I'm going to talk to you guys about this in detail in just a second, but um, eventually, whenever they close out of your app, it's going to call other methods like on destroy. So whenever your app, or excuse me, whenever your activity is about to get destroyed or die, um, what you might want to do is do things like save their data for them. So if they, I don't know, are playing a game or something, you might want to save all of their settings so they can have it the next time they open your app. So basically what I'm trying to say is each activity that you create is going to go through many different stages in its life or many different states as it's more commonly referred to. So in this tutorial that's what I'm going to be doing talking about every single state and the details of each. So the first thing that you actually probably want to do is start your emulator because I know they kind of take a long time to boot up and we're actually going to be tweaking some of this code and changing some things so uh, yeah go ahead and do that now another thing I want to mention is this I'm going to be talking to you guys through each stage of your activities life and instead of just me explaining it and talking through I figured it would be a better idea to actually print something out on the screen every time the state of your activity changed so what we can do is we can actually import this cool class and this is another tip you guys are learning like two things in this tutorial bonus information um all right so if you go to android.util.log what this is, is is pretty much a package that lets us print out log information and all we're going to do is we're going to print out something on the bottom of the screen that says like um your activity is being created or something so that's all we're doing all right so once we have that imported go above all your methods and we're going to make a new let me scroll down here. We're going to make a new private static final string variable, not string, string, and I'm just going to name this tag. And it's good convention to name it tag just because um, in the documentation for this, this is just what you do. And you're, you guys are going to see what this does in a second. Well, I probably should talk you guys through this. So the purpose of this tutorial is to talk to you guys about the different states of your activity. Now, by default, your emulator is going to be sending out a bunch of different messages pretty much when any event happens. And there's a lot of crap that happens on your phone, but we are only interested in these messages regarding states. So just to filter out um, the important messages, we're going to make a special tag and stick it on each activity. It's going to be called Bucky's 
message, you can actually name this anything you want because it's just like a unique identifier. Say only print out these log messages and not all the other crap that we don't care about. All right, so once we have that, what I want you to do is go down to on create right here and I'll show you guys how to add one of these log messages. So if you go log dot I, what you can do is you can throw in two parameters right here. The first parameter is your tag. So this is just Bucky's message and this is just for filtering out um, the important ones later on. Now after this is what do you want to print out on the screen and I'll just actually print out the state of this activity. So again that's all these three lines of code do right here. And they're actually really helpful whenever you're trying to debug, debug something in your Android development process. Now another tip that's going to make your Android Studio development process a little bit easier is this thing called code completion. And I'll show you guys how it works right now. So under this method right here, click where you would first start writing your method and then hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and hit insert. So right here, it's going to pop up a bunch of different things. What we want to choose is override methods. Because remember, we're pretty much inheriting all these methods from the activity class. However, we just want to customize them to add our own custom log message, just so we can see what's going on. So click override methods, and then it's going to give us a bunch of different options to override. So these are saying, okay, what method do you want to use pretty much do you want us to um, fill in for you? Well, there's actually this method called onStart. So if you scroll down a little bit right here, onStart and hit OK. There we go. Saves us some time. Again, it took a little bit, <laughs> it took a while for me to just explain it, but if you're just doing it to yourself, it takes like five seconds, so pretty sweet. But anyways, now that we have this onStart, method what I want to do is actually just copy this to add another log that's going to print out on our screen and I'm just going to add on start now instead of me doing the exact same thing over and over and over again what I actually did is I took all of the methods that I want to overwrite and I actually put it on my forum so if you go to my forum again this is the URL I'll put this below the video if you guys just want to click on it but check this out. I put all the source code right there, so go ahead and copy this and hop over back to Android Studio and paste it back in. And I actually um, can delete this because I copied that too. But now it saved you a bunch of typing. Pretty sweet. So all this program is going to do is it's going to print out a little message on the screen every time your activity changes states. Again, you would never want to do this in the actual app. This is just to demonstrate when each of these stages are going to happen. But for this example, it's actually pretty useful. So like I said before, whenever we use this little log program right here, by default, it's going to be printing out a bunch of random log messages. Pretty much everything that's going on in your phone or your little emulator is going to try to print out. But what we are only interested in are these log messages that we created right here. So we need to build a real quick filter. So to do that, head over to your Android tab right here, click on it, and all right. So those are a bunch of, see, these are all the ones we don't want to see. And this is just because my emulator is running right now. So obviously, we want to make a filter, and this is how you do this. And another thing I want to point out is this is just a nice little Easter egg. If you look at this log cat symbol, you're going to see that it's actually the Android head. And this is actually non, I don't even know how to pronounce it. But you know that YouTube video where it's like that cat that looks like he's attached to a pop tart or something with a rainbow come out of his butt? That's a little symbol for that. So, um, I don't know. I just thought that was a cool little Easter egg. All right. So, anyways, back to building our filter. What we're going to say is any log message that has this tag attached Bucky's message only show those so make sure whatever you whatever string you have here copy this now in the drop down right here select edit filter configuration this allows us to build a filter right here now I actually already did this but my microphone was off so that's why this is filled in right here 
I have a weird microphone and when you put it up it mutes itself and uh, so yeah I just filmed for about five minutes and then I was trying to edit the video and I'm like oh can't hear anything because I'm a moron so so again you're gonna have to call yours anything you want I'm just gonna call mine Bucky filter and the only other thing you have to add is by log tag regex just stick this right in here so it's gonna say okay filter equals built so now instead of no filters which show everything we can only show log messages with this attached pretty sweet so now just go ahead up to here and run your app now keep your eye on this little section right here because whenever our app actually builds itself and pops up it's gonna start displaying those state messages So of course choose OK and check it out alright so our app is loading and it switched back to this thing you SOB so I'm gonna switch it back to Bucky's filter but check this out Let me position this so you guys can see it alright so the first thing it printed out was on create now I already told you guys and you well you obviously know what that method does it pretty much just sets up the interface now after that on start this method always gets called right after either on create or on restart so what on start means is pretty much your app is about to start up the that's the most simple I can explain it now on resume what this means is it's a method that always gets called whenever your activity is the one that the user currently has open so remember anytime you want to add code that says okay the user is now looking at this screen this is the activity that they have open you can stick that in on resume now just to show you guys some cool stuff whenever you actually close out of your app hit the home button right here look what happens the first thing it does is it calls on pause and then it says on save instant state and then on stop now on pause what this means is the user is no longer seeing your activity so whenever of course I was looking at that screen no I'm now I'm no longer looking at it then on pause gets called now another reason on pause may get called is maybe I just switched screens and I'm now looking at a new one so again those are two different times when your app is going to call on pause pretty much when your user is looking at the screen and they're not looking at it anymore now instead of talking to you guys about on save instant state in detail and on stop there's actually a lot more different states than this what you guys can do is I found this image online that is absolutely awesome and I stuck it in that same URL so what you can see here is a pretty awesome visualization of every single state in your activity now again I wanted to show you guys this because right now if I talk about every single one of these things in detail it's probably gonna be a little overwhelming and kinda of pointless right now so instead what I'm gonna do is this I'm just gonna talk about these now that we understand what they are and that they do exist I'm gonna talk about each state as we need them alright guys welcome back and in this video I want to start talking about designing the user interface it's one of the more fun and also one of the more easier to understand topics and actually what I decided to do is instead of working anymore with this I actually want to start a brand new project so to close out of this click file close project and actually if you just close out of Android Studio like you want to start a new project so you just close out of the entire thing and then you open it back up again then what it's going to do is it would just open up that project again so if you ever want to get back to this window you would have to click file close project so if you're trying to do that and that's why well I just explained it for you so from here what I want to do is click start a new Android Studio project and you can actually name this anything you want since we're just gonna be like um I don't know not doing anything real important to it I'm gonna name mine hand blaster because why not and all these should be good from last time click next this is still good we're still making something for the phone now instead of like last time where we chose blank activity what this would do is it would make that one default blank screen but I want to show you guys how to add activities manually so instead of this choose add no activity so when you click finish 
what's going to happen is it's going to load up and you're pretty much going to have an empty completely empty um, project I mean it's going to have those core files but check it out alright so when it's done setting up this is what you get now obviously if we click on project on the left hand side we can see that it does indeed have some files created for us but definitely no activities or screens anywhere and uh, well our app would be pretty stinking useless if the user didn't have any screen to look at so let's go ahead and do that first so make sure you're in Android view you can actually look at project view if you want but I'm gonna be in Android view and in your app expand that and go to Java expand that as well now remember this is where we're gonna be building that activity if you remember from last time this is actually where that file was so now if you right click it and select new scroll down to activity and we'll just choose blank activity so again once we're looking at this screen what this is is basically if we clicked blank activity whenever we're setting up our project then this is where we would be but that's how you do it manually and also whenever you add addi additional um, activities to whatever projects we're working on in the future that's how you do that so remember it now for right now this example is only going to have one activity so I really don't need to give anything like a name because I'm not really going to get disorganized with one activity however since this is the only activity it's very important that you choose this launcher activity now remember the launcher activity is the very first screen that whenever Android is trying to open your app it's gonna look for this so without it if you don't if you have a bunch of activities and none of them are the launcher activity then your apps not gonna open correctly so since this is our only activity we need to make it the launcher activity aka the starting point so as soon as you create an activity what Android Studio is going to do is it's going to create those two files for us. Let me make sure this looks nice and pretty for you guys. Alright, so of course, you remember that main activity, that Java, the brains behind it, and the interface. No need to discuss everything we got because you guys already know what all that means. So, one other thing I want to point out is you're like, okay, wait a minute, there was one more thing. You said that all of my activities had to be taken care of in the manifest so let me just look at the manifest and we we'll probably have to do something here open this and oh check it out Android Studio actually took care of all of that for us whenever we just created that new activity again in the manifest this is where all your activities have to be declared it did everything for us pretty stinking awesome that is also another reason I love Android Studio so just close out of that and we can continue with the good stuff so over in activity underscore main dot xml the first thing I want to do is delete this little thing right here this text view so just go ahead select it like before and just delete it now just for this example um, this is just to demonstrate a few things so I'll say that I'm building the very first page to the best social network ever the new boston.com not like I'm biased or anything I mean it's not even like it's my social network but anyways so what we need are a couple things the first thing is this large text alright so that's a little bit easier to read I'm just gonna organize everything before I start customizing any of these widgets so drag in large text and we'll say that this says um like sign in or login so this will be the login screen so under this of course we need two little input areas for the user to enter their login information an email and a password so first let's get that email scroll down it's actually under text fields so click that if it's not expanded in for email just drag that over and we can tell when it's aligned with the middle because of this little green line so drop that right there alright looks pretty good now under here we'll have a password field so drag that and drop it somewhere under there looks good now of course if I was actually designing this then what I would do is I would have to make a little text area here that says email and password but for right now just demonstrating some stuff this is uh, you know simple enough now of course after they're done typing in their information they need some button to click on 
So if we scroll way back up, it has, is it way back up? It's like two inches away. But we're gonna select this button and drag it right underneath here. And we'll actually align this in the dead center of your app by using those little alignment things. And all right, looking pretty good. So what I wanna do now is I actually wanna change the text on this right here and also on the button. So again, this is a login screen. So if I hop over, actually I'll change one this way. So select this large text text view element. If we scroll down to a property called text, then what we can see is, okay, right now it's set the large text. That's the text that displays. What we actually want to do is click on this and we'll change it to something like sign in and hit enter. So of course we can change the text that way. All right, pretty sweet. Now, if we hop over to the source code view, then let's go ahead and change the text on the button through here. So of course, right now it just says new button. That's the default. Let's go ahead and change this to, for some reason, I don't like when the button text is the same as the title text. So I'm gonna change this to log in. All right, sweet. So the title says sign in and this says log in. Now another thing that's kind of annoying me is I hate when there's not enough space for the user to actually type in their information and these little edit text areas or inputs if you call them if you're a web designer they're kind of um, you know kind of look bunched not enough room there so what I'm gonna do is in this first one I'm gonna add a new attribute and the attribute to actually just make this a little bit wider is Android in D R O I D and it's width. Now I'll talk to you guys about um you see that whenever you're all right, I probably should mention this. So when if you're a web designer, you probably use um either pixels or percentage or EM if you work with text a lot. However, whenever you're making apps, you're gonna use these special things called DP, and those are device pixels. And I'll talk to you guys about the different units of measurement right now, but just so you guys have a real basic understanding. If you had a phone that was high def, for example, so it was 1920 by 1080 or even 1280 by 720, that just means how many pixels are on there. You could have um, a computer screen or a TV that's 1280 by 720, or you could have a little phone that's 1280 by 720. So if you try to work with pixels, you really don't know how big a pixel is because the size of a pixel changes from device to device. So if you use these DP, they give you a little bit more control. And again, that's just uh, why we use DP for right now. I'll talk uh, more about that later. Later, it's gonna make a lot more sense. But for right now, I wanna change this to something like 320 DP wide because I know that that is a good width right there. And I actually wanna do the same for this right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that, scroll down and paste that into. So now both of these things are 320 wide, looking pretty sweet. So let's hop back over in designer. And all right, I mean, this interface is looking beautiful right now. However, there's one other little thing that I want to point out. So select the top text view widget, the sign in title. And whenever you select it, you're going to notice that there is a light bulb on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and click this and find out what's this about. Okay. Hard coded string. Okay. So it's giving us a little warning message. And what this warning message is saying is what you should do is instead of just writing a string in there, like we just did, you should treat this as a resource. So let me first show you guys how to treat this as a resource and then I'm going to tell you exactly why. So make sure again, you select your widget, click the light bulb. Now click the little right arrow next to here and choose ex extract string resource. It's kind of hard to say. So right here, what we're pretty much doing is I don't want to say that this is a variable because it's technically a resource, but if you never um, worked with like XML before or resources or you never developed for Android before you're probably not really familiar with this what we pretty much need to do is give a nickname 
to this string. So I'm just going to name it something like sign in title and then that's it. Click OK. Now as you can see what's going to happen is instead of sign in title like we had it changes to this weird at string sign in title thing. So let's hop over in the source code and look what's going on. So of course it changed back to sign in as it should but if we look at the text now we still have a reference to the resource instead of the string itself. So what exactly is happening? Well to understand what we need to do is we actually need to open a new file and this file is under app just like before RES this actually stands for a resource now under values you're gonna have a file called strings.xml now alright let me adjust my seat because I'll uh, <laughs> explain this so the reason that we needed to make this a resource is because we're pretty much saying put all of the strings in one place in one file and then I'm just gonna reference them through XML so again whenever we reference a string it's gonna look in this file it's gonna look for that resource name and this one was sign in title and then it's gonna say okay that was actually equal to sign in so that's the value of this now if we did something like sign in with an exclamation mark we can just switch over and that would change no problem so again what we're doing is we're pretty much putting a placeholder right here and it references something else now you were wondering okay well what was the problem with just writing sign in in my source code right here why did it give me a hard time well the reason that it wants all of your strings in one place it's because if you ever do something like you want to translate your app to Spanish well what you can do is you can actually just say okay you don't have to look around your entire app and say okay okay this is a string now this is a string now I have to go to a hundred other um, activities and find all of those no you just look at one file it has all the strings for your entire app and you just translate it right there and there's a bunch of other useful things too but pretty much it makes your apps life a whole lot easier when all the strings are organized in one file so that's why we did that and also since this is a string as well it's probably a good idea to do it to this so again select your button click the light bulb right arrow extract string resource and for this I'll just call it something like um, I don't know like sign in button text and choose OK and of course if we can see on our button instead of that text we have a reference to it but of course whenever we're running our app they don't see this weird reference symbol and again anytime you see an at sign that means that this isn't a hard-coded string this is actually a reference to something else so again that's what's going on right there now one other thing I want to point out is this so we're gonna be referencing a bunch of stuff and we know why that's useful right now and actually go in your strings.xml file and close this out because typically we're not gonna have that open however what if you wanted to change the text of this well you can go back in the folder go all the way find that file again but that takes a lot of time so instead what you can do is in the source code that XML select or excuse me press down control on your keyboard and you see whenever you do this then you can actually hover over these references now click and whenever you click it it opens up that file again so pretty sweet again you I don't know maybe you want to change that sign in to I don't know maybe you want to get rid of that symbol at the end again hold down control and this actually works for any reference but what we want to do is click that the file opens again and that line of code is actually highlighted so now I can close that and boom check it out so those are some really cool tips and now you guys know how to manually add activities you guys also know how to add strings as a reference so um yeah that's pretty much it for this tutorial 
Now, one other thing I want to mention before I let you guys go is this. So right now we're making something called a static layout. It's a layout that's not going to change. Um, you know, we don't want to make a, like a, a sign-in form where the button's like floating around and the user has to click it to sign in. I mean, if you're making a game, that would be great. But uh, for right now, we always want everything to be in the same place. However, there are going to be some layouts, um, maybe like the stream, if you're reading like a bunch of posts, that actually change. So, of course, that feed goes up and down as you scroll with your thumb. And also with games, you know, maybe there's like a bird flying around that you have to click. Or maybe you have to like make tanks that are moving around. Well, whenever you need a layout that's interactive like games, then we're going to need to do something special. And what we actually do is instead of using this, the designer in the XML, we're going to be making our layout in Java. It's going to be pretty sweet, but also pretty easy to understand. So, uh, yeah, I'm pumped up. That's what I'm going to be teaching you guys in the next tutorial, how to make interactive layouts. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will smell you later. All right, guys, welcome back to another video tutorial. never know what to say. Do I call it a tutorial or video? Who knows? But welcome back. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to make a user interface entirely in Java. Now, if you didn't watch my last video, I gave a quick explanation right at the end. But basically, whenever you use that designer, it's really good for making static or just user interfaces that don't change a lot. But whenever you have something like a game or any interface where things are moving around, it's useful to create your objects in Java. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So close out of any project you have, hit file, close, and then you can start a new one. I'm just going to name this like, uh, let's name it Allison, because I have a crush on this girl named Allison. Let me center this. And all of this stuff looks good. You can actually name it anything you want. And of course, we're making it for the phone. And choose blank activity right here and hit next. Now, this is our right. So pretty much just uh, give it a name and keep all the defaults. Now once everything is done setting up, what you can do is you can actually hop right over to your Java file. And actually we aren't going to be using this XML file at all. So again, like I said, let me expand this a little bit. So the first thing that your app is essentially going to do is it's going to look at this class right here and it's going to say, okay, what layout do you want to use? And right now, in this line right here the content view pretty much tells your app this is the layout this is the user interface and right now it's pointing to activity main which is this we know all that already so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that and I actually want to show my line numbers so it's on line 14 so delete that so now we have this class but it has no interface whatsoever the user has nothing to look at so actually I do want to hop over in this XML file because even though we aren't going to be using it, I do want to show you guys how we need to set up our interface. So this is our main device. So we can't really do anything with the screen. Now, all right, let me adjust myself because get ready to explain. All right. So the very first thing we need for user interface is a layout. Now a layout is just your general rules telling how everything how all of your widgets are supposed to be positioned and aligned and everything. Now, once we have a layout, we can start adding widgets to it. All right, so first, let's go ahead and make a layout and then add some widgets to it. Now, in order to actually use these classes, we need to import something. So import android.widget is the first one. And again, the first thing is relative layout. and there are different types of layouts for example we're going to be using relative that's what we're used to working with so far but they also have um, table layouts grid layouts again um, relative layout is kind of hard to understand at first because whenever you're laying out your widgets they're all going to be positioned relative to something else so for example the first example we'll do we'll say make a button and position it relative to the middle of your screen 
So it's kind of hard to explain. It's a lot easier to visualize a table or a grid. But once you start coding, um, you'll see what relative really means. Pretty much position whatever you have relative to something else. So the next thing we need to do is import android.widget.button. So again, in this really simple example, I'm just going to have a layout and then I'm going to put a button in the middle of the screen. So now that you have both of those imported, let me tighten this up so you guys can see it a bit. What we want to do is we want to stick all of the code to create the layout inside the onCreate method. So remember that code that we deleted was right in here. And remember, whenever your activity first gets called, first gets created, this is the very first thing it does. So it's always a good idea to make your layout inside this method. So hop right under this statement right here. And actually, let me give myself some space. Now, the first thing I want to do is just make a relative layout object. So relative layout, that's what we just imported. And I'm just going to name my layout. You can name anything you want. I'm just going to name mine Bucky's. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good name. Bucky's layout. That'll be easy to remember. And what you do is you set this equal to new relative layout, this. So now we have a layout. Essentially what we did is we created this right here. But now it has a cool name and we can do some cool stuff to it. So after this, I'm going to create a widget and I'm just going to create a button. So button, I'll, uh, I'll make this a red button. So red button, again you can name yours anything you want. And move new button this so now we have a layout and a button but that's it we created them and they're in memory but we didn't do anything to it we didn't even tell it to actually display these things on the screen yet so the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to add a widget or pretty much add this button to the layout because right now, like I said, these are two separate things and that's it. So in order to do that, take your layout and anytime you want to add a widget to it, the method is called add view. Now it's called add view instead of add widget because all of these things, they inherit from the view, the view class. That's why you see sometimes like plain text view and image view. All of the widgets are also views. So add view, just think of it like add a widget to your layout. So what widget do you want to add? Well we only have one so far, the red button. Now after this, again what we did is we created a layout and we created a button and then we took that button and we added it to the view, or excuse me, well technically we did, but we added it to the layout. Now all we have to say is okay, now take that layout and actually use it for this activity's main user interface or main display. So anytime you want to do that, you actually call a method called set content view. And all this is saying is, okay, what do you want this activity's main interface to be? Well, obviously we only have one thing we can stick in there, layout. So it's going to make this the main screen. And of course, since we added a button to it, that button is also going to display. So now I actually probably should have started my emulator before, but I'm going to start up my emulator and run this bad boy. All right, so there you have it. I know this is kind of hard to look at right now because the background is kind of light gray and the button is kind of like normal gray. So in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to um, actually add some properties to this to give it some color and add some text to the button as well. And also what I did is I added some comments in the source code while, while my emulator was starting. And another thing that I want to mention is if you guys want any of the source code either from this tutorial or in the future tutorials, at the end of every tutorial I copy all of this and post it in my forum. So if you just want to, I don't know, like sit back and watch the tutorial, some people like coding along some people like watching the tutorials and then just using the source code you can do that as well but anyways all of this is going to be in my forum for you guys so uh thank you guys for watching
Don't forget to subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to be making this look a lot better. Alrighty, guys. So in the last video, what we did is we created the most boring interface on Earth. Gray with a gray button that says nothing on the button. So let's go ahead and spice this up by adding some color and actually adding some text to the button. So anytime we want to work with color, we actually need to import android.graphics.color. So now we have the ability to use color. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so the first thing I want to do is actually just change the color of my layout or the background. So adding properties is actually really easy. Choose whatever you want to add a property to in well the properties are different but I know that this one is set background color now since we imported from this graphics library what we can do is call color dot and it gives you a bunch of default ones but uh, I don't know what's a good one green will probably stand out although I think that this green is like lime like very bright green so it'll definitely uh, stand out in the thumbnail so I guess that's good now we have a gray, or excuse me, a green background in that gray button. So I actually want to change this to red. Since we did name it red button, it would only be fair. Now before I do that, I actually want to set the text. So of course, whenever we use the set text method, it's just going to add text to the button. And what do I want to set it to? And stupid working. All right, I'll just write like click me. Pass. All right, looks good. Actually, I don't want that mark. It looks a little too much, if you ask me. So now, of course, we need to set the background color of this to red. So red button, set background color, and color red. All right, so now our background is green. And our button is now red and it says click me Haas on it. So let's go ahead and run that and test it out. Alright, so there we have it looking pretty good. And for some reason, this is reminding me of a Ninja Turtle right now. Raphael. Okay, so I kind of am digging this green color with the red. But anyways, the next thing I want to do is I want to show you guys how to take this button and position it in the middle of the screen right there. So right after your layout and right before your button, give yourself some space. Ah, oh, there we go. I ate a Hot Pocket like two hours ago and every time I burp it smells like a Hot Pocket. So, you know, I'm sure you guys are interested in that. But essentially, what we're going to do with this button, if I could pull this back up, is we need to give it some rules. And the rules are going to say, okay, position yourself in the center of the screen both horizontally and vertically so it's gonna appear right here so the first thing we're actually gonna do is we're gonna make a container to put it in and then we're gonna pretty much take that container and position it in the middle you guys are gonna see in just a second so if you actually call this relative layout dot layout params these layout parameters are just rules for something you want your layout to do so since these are going to be applied to the button, I'm just going to name these like button details and set this equal to relative layout, layout params. Now inside here, what you need to pass in is the height and the width for this container. So what we can actually do is take relative layout, the layout params, and we're going to call a property called wrap content now what this does is it automatically gets um, the height and the width of your content so let me just finish this real quick and then it will be easier to see what's going on so again since we need to pass it in the height and the width and actually this is giving me an error because of course since we're setting this equal to an object we have to call noom alright so we're passing in the height and the width so what we're going to say is just get whatever content is in your container. It's only going to be this button we're going to be sticking in there. And then 
get the height and the width automatically. So we don't need to pass in like a fixed value or anything. It's really easy that way. So now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, take this and position it in the center of your screen. So now that you got everything set up, you can position it wherever you want it. And in order to do that, just take that object, button details, and the rule for it, again, this is pretty much a rule of how you're going to position it, is relative layout dot center horizontal, and we're going to add another one to center vertically, and then center vertical, and then of course that's going to take it and put it in the dead center. Now, in order to actually apply these rules to your button, what you need to do is whenever you add your view, right now this is just adding the button wherever it um, you know goes by default. However, if we want to give it an explicit position, we just pass in button details and it says, okay, this adds the button to the layout and this right here is saying how you want to add it. So pretty sweet. Let's run this and make sure we didn't mess anything up. All right, looking good. So in this video, now you guys know how to add color, how to set some properties for your widgets, and also how to position them at least vertically and horizontally on the screen. So in the upcoming tutorials, I'm going to show you guys how to have a lot more control and how to create some more awesome layouts. It's going to be awesome. Again, if you want the source code for any of this, it's going to be on my forum. So uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.